Straight to the Super Bowl, Matthew Stafford. Straight to the Super Bowl. First pre uh, the training camp's open and first preseason game done is August the 14th. I have marked my calendar. It is Rams versus Chargers in a game where we will see we will not see Matthew Stafford or you probably won't see any starters. Anybody that's going to play a significant role in the team, but I can't wait to see the new stadium uh, with a, uh, a football game actually going on. So, uh, John, last night, and we're continuing to monitor exactly what is going on with Max Scherzer and keeping an eye on any other Major League Baseball trades that could go down. The deadline is uh, 23 hours from right now. It's tomorrow at 1 o'clock our time. Meanwhile, the NBA draft is tonight, and that could mean uh, trades, including a trade uh, for the Lakers tonight. There are lots of rumors out there. Lakers uh, okay, kicking the some, tires. Okay, you want a on... little bit of encouraging news? Yeah, yeah. Okay, John Heyman. Okay, I trust John Heyman. Just tweeted 15 seconds ago. Padres are surely very interested and aggressive in their pursuit of top trade target Max Scherzer, but source insists there are multiple teams still with a chance. Those teams are believed to include the Dodgers and perhaps the Giants, Red Sox, and one other team. So maybe not done yet. Maybe. Mm. We'll Here's an interesting nugget. As the trade, de- this is Kyle Glazer, is a good baseball writer. As the trade deadline heats up, one thing to remember: only about one in five prospects traded at the deadline end up playing more than one season in the majors and producing a positive career wins above replacement. So, in other words. Most of the prospects that get dealt, 20% of the prospects will have a chance to make it in the big leagues, uh, and 80% will never hear from again. So this is part of your proven, unproven. Yeah, I would always argue, trade unproven for proven. And I would argue that what Friedman does, he trades the right unproven and keeps – keeps the ones that have real potential. We've had success in our minor league system. He hasn't given up somebody who has come back to haunt him. So we'll keep uh, track of all that stuff for you. Last night, John, I was at a restaurant called The Cloverfield, which is really nice. It is over here. It's on airport uh, right near Sentinella. Nice place. Okay. Uh, Outdoor patio. So I I witnessed two interactions, and I wonder if this is common. Um, An older couple was sitting at their table across the patio from us and the husband got up and went to the kitchen door like this the kitchen door the silver one that opens and closes and in I would call it not a loud I call it like a medium loud voice said my wife needs her food she's hungry meanwhile at the host position who did he say it to he said it into the kitchen. It must have been somebody, a waiter, waitress, okay. something like that, just inside the kitchen. Okay. Then at the host position, a woman was arguing with the hostess about why there weren't more tables. Not enough tables here at the Cloverfield. And it struck me that what I've seen since the pandemic has ended is people have forgotten how to be nice and polite and decent. Have you found that? The pandemic. Um. I think there is a general, no matter where you go, whether it be in an airport or in line to get coffee or, you know, I think there is a general anger out there that maybe didn't exist pre-pandemic. Um, I haven't seen it manifest itself exactly like that. But yeah, I, I think service in general, I don't know if you found this, but service in general has really gone bad, has really suffered. I no, think wait a minute. Do you think service is... When you say service has suffered, what do you mean? That it's harder to get good service in a place like a restaurant, like where you were. Right. And so, because of that, people are, are less patient because of the pandemic. And so, the combination of those two things, like most restaurants are having trouble getting people to show up for work. You know, um, so I think it's a, it's a, a, uh, a situation like that. All right, breaking news. Okay. Uh-huh. Before you tell me the other one. This has nothing to do with the Dodgers. Lakers center Montrez Harrell is opting in. Oh, good. To his $10 million, it's actually $9.7 million player option for next season. Now, this was expected because he, the, I don't think he was going to get $10 million anywhere else. Yep. Um, but so now the Lakers know exactly what they're dealing with and whether or not they could, like, for example, they could put Trez in a deal or they could, you know, keep him and 
use him as a frontline guy and, and go get a guard. I mean, now they know what they're dealing with. Yeah, he's at nine million or so that he's opting into nine point seven. Nine points, and he he immediately becomes for the Lakers a uh, tradable piece. You know their tradable pieces are Montrez, Kuzma, and KCP. Um, those are really their tradable piece. I guess they could work something out on a to trade, sign and trade with THT, but I'm not necessarily thinking about that. Um, I think Trez, Kuzma, and KCP are their three most tradable assets right and remember when you're making a trade you should always pay attention to the salary you have coming in and the salary you have going out they need to be within 25 percent of each other so for example you can't bring in a 25 million dollar player and trade him for a 10 million dollar player but if you have a 10 million dollar player and another 10 million dollar player two of them so it's 20 then you could work it so yeah, so and any of that can go down tonight. Go down this afternoon before Could go the draft. On this afternoon, exactly, exactly. So I tweeted, uh, if Scherzer goes to the Padres, as a Dodgers fan, how concerned are you? Uh, here are some of the responses. Concerned regardless. Concerned, no. Angry, mad, yes. Done with 2021. It's like Verlander to Houston all over again. More concerned about the offense. That's interesting. More concerned about the offense. Concerned, no. Angry, yeah. I, I think this is going to be tough to explain to Dodger fans if Max Scherzer goes to the Padres. All right, one more time. I know we're bouncing around a lot, but it's one of those days. Yeah. Woj just tweeted this. With Montrez, this is Adrian Wojnarowski from ESPN. This isn't me. Yep. I'm just reading his tweet. With Harrell's opt-in, Lakers are able to move toward completing a deal to acquire Kings guard Buddy Heald for Kyle Kuzma and Harrell. Sources tell ESPN. So that's Woj reporting that, that they are moving towards completing a deal. Heald would come to the Lakers. Coos and Harrell would go to, to Sacramento. Not done, but Woj reporting it's, it's moving forward. So they will potentially, and we talked about this earlier in the show, kind of a choice between DeMar DeRozan, who's a playmaker, unrestricted free agent, potential sign-and-trade, or a three-point shooter, where they had their issue, they shot 29% in that series against the Suns. Just disastrous. So Harrell opts in. He becomes a tradable chip. And again, Woj is reporting uh, that they're moving towards uh, completing a deal to acquire Buddy Heald for Kyle Kuzma and Montrez Harrell. So we'll keep an eye on that. So now we've got two things. We get kind of two spinning plates um, going right now during the show. Max Scherzer from multiple sources, is close to being traded to the Padres. And now maybe the Lakers are acquiring Buddy Heald. We'll see. Um, So I'm curious from Dodger fans, since Scherzer's right on the brink. It's not over. It's not completely done. But since he's right on the brink of becoming a Padre, inches away is what Jim Bowden says. How concerned are you about the Dodgers? I mean, all of a sudden you got Max Scherzer in the division. I actually think, and it's not just Scherzer, it's Adam Frazier, too, the all-star second baseman from the Pirates they got. Um, I think the Padres are now the favorite, depending on if the Giants or Dodgers make any more moves this afternoon uh, or actually any time before 1 o'clock tomorrow. But landing – all right, so think about this. They've landed – since the Dodgers knocked him out last year, mm-hmm. they've landed Blake Snell, you Darvish, Joe Musgrove, who threw a no hitter this year, who wasn't on their staff last year, and now Max Scherzer, four starting pitchers, and Adam Frazier, an all star second baseman. And they already had Fernando Tatis and, and all those dudes. So I think on paper, don't you think the Padres become the team to beat? Uh, they're five and a half back. Um, how many? How many back of the Dodgers are they? Two. Uh, they're back two and a half. Uh, three and a half of the Dodgers. Two and, and, the, half of the, and Dodgers. the Dodgers losing four to nothing uh, in the fifth today in San, in San yeah, Francisco. Yeah. So the Padres, if they played, I mean, it's Thursday. I don't know if they play or not, but they could pick up a game. Pick and game. Uh, and your buddy Bickford is in there for the Dodgers. Phil team. Bickford. Who do you want to go to? Who do you want on that wall, Bickford? <laughs> 
rocking the crazy mullet. You know, baseball players are allowed to get away with haircuts that nobody else could get away with. Like if I had, a, if I had Phil Bickford's hair, I would get stares. But if, as a baseball player, you're like, you're allowed to do whatever you want with your hair. You're allowed to mohawk. You're allowed to, I guess I would call that the super mullet that Phil Buck, Bickford's got. Yeah, I, I just think he doesn't cut it. He doesn't cut his hair. Yeah, no, it just just completely lets it go. Pitchers, uh, this is their this is their jam. This is their thing now. Um, all right, so I wanted to get to uh, something here. By the way, if if you're a Dodger fan, how concerned are you? Eight seven 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 ten ESPN about uh, Max Scherzer if in fact the deal is completed and he goes to the Padres. So one thing that came up last night that I thought was interesting and good for us, uh, good for uh, I forget the name of the uh, girl that won the all round at the Olympics, but uh, fantastic. Uh, Simone Biles did not compete. She did, um, and she won. But what I came across yesterday, what was the first episode about Ted, La- Ted Lasso about? What do you mean, what was it? What you, was it about? It was about... Well, they added, they added a, a psychologist, a sports psychologist to the team. Because somebody had the Y word, right? The yips. Right. And they were very superstitious about even saying it. Now I read Danny Rojas. Simone, is the Simone guy who Biles had... has got had the what's called the twisties, which are basically the yips for gymnasts. Right, which you can't mess around with. No, you can't. You can't. I mean, if if you if you She'll are yourself. Yeah, I, I I again we talked about this at length yesterday, but I don't understand the hate for Simone Biles. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I either. just don't. I think she deserves sympathy. Okay, I wanted to throw this out there too. Uh, we'll get your calls here in a minute. Uh, I found another origin of expression thing, okay? And this is, it'll cost you an arm and a leg. Do you know the origin of the expression, it'll cost you an arm and a leg? No. Okay. So in the 1700s, there were no cameras. One image was either sculpted or painted. Prices changed by painters were not based on how many people were to be painted, but how many limbs were to be painted. Arms and legs are limbs, therefore painting them would cost the buyer more, hence the expression, okay, but it will cost you an arm and a leg. Hmm. Hold on, I'm writing this down. (laughs) It is on the list. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, we do that here. We do that here. Linz, how you, how you, they, they finally sniffed out a lie yesterday, Lindsay. Uh, um, I think that one is, that, I think that one sounds like it's legit. I don't know. Oh, okay, good, good. All, I'm, all I'll admit to right now is it's on the list. On the list. <laughs> on, the on the list. Exactly. Uh, all right, uh, coming up next where you'll get some of your calls. If you're a Dodger fan, how concerned are you? 877-710-ESPN. If, in fact, the deal is completed, Max Scherzer to the Padres. And, you know, the, the Dodgers, th- this is an arms race in the West. I just read a tweet from, from a blue check mark that said it's likely that Jose Barrios and Craig Kimbrell still wind up in the National League West. So they're loading up. 877-710-ESPN. Mason in Ireland, 710 ESPN. All right, so a couple of things here. First of all, Woj now confirming that Landry Shamit, who had been linked to the Lakers to some degree, uh, has been traded to the Phoenix Suns. Apparently, uh, Monty Williams coached uh, Landry Shamit in Philly at some point and really loves the guy. So uh, he's off the board now for the for the Lakers. The Lakers are working on a deal uh, that would send Kyle Kuzma and Montrez Harrell, who just opted in, uh, to Sacramento for Buddy Heald. Uh, and that gives them a three-point shooter, which is what they could have desperately needed this past year in the playoffs and during the regular season. And he's one of the best three-point shooters there is. We're also keeping track of uh, Max Scherzer, whether or not he is going to move to the Padres. As Jim Bowden said a little while ago on Twitter, a deal sending Max Scherzer to the Padres is inches away. Inches away. Mm. But but so far, not confirmed. Not confirmed. Yeah, we could have Dodger deal and a Laker deal all at the same time. Oh, hang on. Shams Tarania, Lakers and Wizards are engaged on a trade that would send Russell Westbrook to L.A. Westbrook wants a move elsewhere. He wants to move elsewhere, and the Lakers are his preferred destination. The Lakers and Wizards engaged on a trade that would send Russell Westbrook to the Lakers. How exciting is this? That is incredible. Can you imagine Russell Westbrook? What? 
what an entertaining team to watch. And, you know, finally, Westbrook with a chance, since his Oklahoma City days, a chance to actually win something. He's sort of been out of the mix the last few years. One of the flat-out most talented players in the game, John Ireland's favorite player uh, in the league to watch and to call games for. The idea of him playing for the Lakers has got to thrill you. I I didn't even want to dream about it yet. I... Can you imagine all of that star power? By the way, Google uh, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis. They love each other. Interesting. Yeah, he wants that deal. It's now, according to Shams, that's now, where he wants to come to the Lakers. Wait a minute. Could they? No. They couldn't do both. Right? I don't know. Could they get Buddy Shield and you'd need like one of those cap guys. You need your Larry Coons or your Eric Pincuses or the guys that do that. Could they do both of those deals? What do they have if they do the Buddy Heald deal? What do they have left to trade to? It would be a sign and trade involving Schroeder. Schroeder. But it would have to involve more than that. I would Schroeder think. Schroeder and KCP. Schroeder sign and trade with KCP. That gets you 10 plus whatever you get for Schroeder. You still need to get to a gigantic number. What's Westbrook as? Is he at 40? Yeah. It's a really tough number to get to. I don't. I, I can't see how they would be able to do the healed trade and the Westbrook. If, if, if he could pull that off, if Palenka could pull that off, just, you know, he's a genius. He's right, already Luis, put together a championship Luis Garcia, team. Luis uh, Garcia tweets at us, can you please explain – how we have to trade for DeMar if he's a free agent. Can he come to the Lakers in free agency if he takes a pay cut? It would have to be a tremendous pay cut, uh, Luis. He would have to come for the mid-level exception. DeMar makes about $20 million a year. So the reason you're hearing uh, other player, he, he would sign with the Spurs and then be traded for another player because the Lakers would need to to move money. You can't... The, the Lakers don't have any cap space, so they would have right. to send players out. Um, wow. I, God, can you think of the Lakers with Buddy Heald and Russell? West? Let's dream a little bit. Those two play, you had you had an unbelievable playmaker, and you add this is exactly what they need. They need a playmaker and a three-point shooter. You get both those in that scenario, and you get one of the best playmakers in the game. All right, so this is what I think we should do. Keep an eye on the pick. Because both the Wizards and the Kings would want that pick. Correct. Um, but what what's interesting is, I'm, huh? This would be, I I I wouldn't think you. Just off the top of my head, I can't see a way to do both. I can't see how the money would work, but Rob's well, so Schroeder good at would, this Schroeder stuff. would have to get a really big number in order to get close. What's uh, what's Schroeder plus KCP? Do you get close? About to get thirty-three. Within 20%? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, but who gets the pick? Yeah, who gets? Yeah, who gets? I would imagine Washington gets the pick. We're, we're going to find – well, we'll we'll find out if this thing's going down. Uh, why don't we go to the phones? Let's go to Rich and Seal Beach. Rich, you're on 710 ESPN talking uh, some Dodgers. Hey, Max guys, Scherzer. I'm calling. Hi, about, Rich. Uh, the Max Scherzer deal? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Why I, I'm, I'm all for the Padres getting him. Have, have Dodger fans forgotten? We don't need a starting pitcher like that. All our money spent on starting pitchers like that has always gone to waste. We need Kimbrell, and we need maybe Chris Bryant. Maybe Boros. We do not need Max Scherzer. Okay, not now wait all. a minute. And wait John- a minute. But here's here's what I don't think you're thinking about. It's not just that the Dodgers wouldn't get him. It's that the Padres would. And if the pod, if we go into a series with the Padres, Rich, you're all right. Of, all of a sudden, right. they can throw Blake Snell, Max Scherzer, Hugh Darvish, and Joe Musgrove at us, and we. Don't have Dustin May. Don't have Trevor Bauer. We don't know about Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw, Bueller, Urias, and Tony Gonsolin. That's what we got. Guys, that, that's a pretty good starting lineup, if you ask me, starting pitching staff. I right. mean, that's what I'm worried know. about. I'm supposed, uh, well, John, and one more question for you. If, in fact, this Westbrook deal does, does go down, 
many, many years ago, 1974, my wife got Russell Westbrook Sr. a job. I will call you back and tell you all about that. It's oh, please do. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. If we get a, if, we'll, yeah, if we get this guy, and I know it's putting the car before the horse, I cannot I tell. So I cannot this. tell you how fun this guy is to watch. Yeah. I am yeah, so he's excited. Like I said, I've met his father many, many times. What a great guy he is. I've never met Russell Jr., but I've met Sr., and if, if Junior's anything like Sr., what a great guy. But I am so excited about this trade. Yeah. I hope it goes down. Yep. All oh, right, man. Thanks, how, Mace, how exciting is this? Oh, this is a great day to be on the radio, man. I, I've been saying this all week. I'm like, these things have converged all at once. NBA draft tonight. Major League Baseball trade deadline tomorrow at 1. NBA free agency opens Monday at 3. All during our show. And anything can happen at any moment. You just heard about the Westbrook report. And we still don't have any confirmation on a done deal yet on Max Scherzer to the All right, here's uh, more. Here's more from Shams. So maybe it's not both. Shams is saying now the Lakers and Wizards are discussing a trade that would send Kuz, Harrell, KCP for Westbrook. The Lakers' number 22 pick in the draft could also be in place. So I think it would be one or the other. Okay, so K- Kuz, Harrell, KCP for uh, and draft pick for Russ. Yeah, you do that deal. You do that deal. And then you know what you got? You you got a team with LeBron. You got a team with uh, Russell Westbrook. You got a team with AD. And you got a bunch of veterans who are going to want to come here and play. Now, what is John Hollinger doing? He just tweeted, as with healed rumored trade, nothing can happen until Trez picks up option. He, that happened half an hour ago, John Hollinger. You're behind yeah, the Yeah, John curve. Hollinger. Woj reported that half an hour ago. He did Get pick with it the up. program. Um, oh, this is interesting. I go to Robert in Oxnard. Hey, Robert, you're on 710 ESPN. Hi. Hey, hi, guys. Uh, how you guys doing today? Everything's We're excellent. great, man. How you doing? All right, lovely hearing you guys. Um, I got a little tidbit on the origin of quotes for you. Okay. Okay, what? So back in the day, uh, they used to load fighter planes with 27 feet long belts worth of ammo. And when they used to go out and they used to come back, they used to tell, uh, they ask them, hey, how'd you do? So the fighter pilot would say, I gave him the whole nine yards. Ah, there you go. Good one. Good one. Yeah, I love that stuff. I love that stuff. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate that. Uh, why don't we go to Eric, who's just driving? Just driving somewhere, Eric. Eric, driving. You're on 710 ES. Eric's on. Go to Ray in Culver City. Hey, Ray. You there? Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah, uh, I don't what's... really care about. I don't really care about the Scherzer deal because right now the Dodgers are going to have a one game. Okay, we're yeah. we're not getting you. I'm sorry, man. It's yeah, the, you're the you're. Uh, we got a bad connection. Phone's but... bad. I am. I'm just. Something's going to happen during the show. Something's going to happen during the show. You know I mean, what's going to end up happening is Russell Westbrook is going to end up on the Padres. <laughs> <laughs> Max Scherzer, Max Scherzer to the, to the Lakers, and and uh, Russell Westbrook to the Padres. That would be very disappointing. That would be very disappointing. Uh, Man, I just hope it's not like remember that show we did years ago in 2011 when the Lakers got Chris Paul and we were coming out of our shoes, and then it all turned out to be a fairy tale because David Stern blocked it. The deal was actually done, and David Stern blocked it. We actually had confirmation of that particular trade. I think it was, I mean, I think it was as close to a done deal as it could be. And then David Stern weighed in and said, put his thumb on the scale and said, "Nope, not doing it." Can you imagine if the if the the Max Scherzer thing reverses course, the Dodgers get Scherzer and the Lakers get Westbrook all before four o'clock? Let's have a parade, man. Yeah, it's it's crazy right now. It is crazy. It's a good time to be listening. Uh, we appreciate none of these you being deals are done, by the way, but they're yeah, sure fun to talk about. Nothing's done. Nothing's done. Uh, all right. Um, hey, I want to tell you about the Giltinis. By the way, coming up for you, John, a new trailer park where they're getting a little action. It's really? coming up. Yeah.
trailer park where they're getting a little action. Plus, any moment uh, any of these deals could happen. Mason and Ireland, 710 ESPN. It's right, getting so now, good now. So now Woj has tweeted, Lakers are near a deal to acquire Russell Westbrook for Kyle Kuzma, Montrez Harrell, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, and their 2021 first-round draft pick, uh, which will go down tonight. That means, I assume, if the draft pick is included, that this thing could get done quick. Well, he says they're near a deal. Uh, I, I mean, I, yeah, and by the way, clock, man, it's all going down. By the way, no THT in these deals. Oh, that's right. They still have the opportunity to match any offer because they will. It's their own player, and they could still sign Alex Caruso, who's an unrestricted free agent, uh, because you'd be signing your own player, and you've got bird rights. So you could wind up keeping both THT and Caruso. Okay, you know what surprises me here? No Schroeder. You're right. In this. Would they would Schroeder they for DeRozan. Schroeder for DeRozan. Schroeder for DeRozan. Well, you don't need Schroeder once you get Westbrook. Correct. That's why you go Schroeder for DeRozan. Schroeder for DeRozan. Holy mackerel. Right, because you still uh, have that chip. Okay, so I know it hasn't happened yet, but Mace is sick of me saying this, but I can't, I can't explain to you guys how fun Russell Westbrook is to watch. He is a human video, video game. game. I always used to joke, and Mace used to make fun of me that he plays a hundred miles an hour with his with hair his hair on, on fire. fire. Uh, but Mace, yeah, I know he, this. <laughs> he puts stats up like no other. This dude is a walking triple-double, and he'd be on the same team as LeBron and AD. I would, okay, so Westbrook, LeBron, AD, or Durant, Harden, and Kyrie. I would take the Laker guys. I would take the Laker guys, too. As, As long as healthy, I would absolutely take the Lakers in that scenario. Take the Lakers in that scenario. So, Here's Russell Westbrook's last three seasons, all with different teams, okay? Yep. So he was with OKC in 2018-2019, okay? So in that year, he averaged uh, 23 points a game, 11 rebounds, and 11 assists, which led the league for the second consecutive year. The next year in Houston, playing with Harden, 27 a game, 7 assists, 8 rebounds. Last year, playing with Bradley Beal, 22 a game, 11 assists, led the league, and 11 rebounds. Mm. Three out of the last four years, he has averaged a triple-double. He has led the league in assists three out of the last four years, and the one year he didn't do it, 2020, LeBron led the league in assists, and we would have both of them. Right. The one question, and this is actually a good one from uh, Bobby Manning on Twitter, Lakers do form a real big three with Westbrook, but where's the spacing? That's a good question because Westbrook does not shoot threes. Um, they They still need to add three point shooting. To get the spacing right. Right. Could they... I, I Could they figure out a way to get healed? I don't know. Could it be Schroeder in a sign-and-trade for healed? No. Uh, Sacramento doesn't want guards. They are oh, right. They're loaded Tyrese up on guards. Tyrese Halliburton right. and De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it sounds like the healed train may have moved out of the All right, here's Mark Stein. Triple-double King Russell Westbrook is headed to the Lakers. Now that the Wizards have swooped in ahead of Sacramento to take the Lakers trade package. Uh, Westbrook and Nationals' Max Scherzer are likely to be traded on the same day. I think it's a big day in Washington, D.C. sports radio. Yeah, really. Yeah, the numbers all work. Kuzma, Trez, KCP for Westbrook, who's making 44.47. And by the way, you could just let Schroeder walk. He's an unrestricted free agent. But why not get something for him? You uh, well, can get something for him. But the other team would have to play ball. Sure. Well, somebody wants Dennis Schroeder. You can get some piece for him. I don't want any part of it. Especially now, it makes no sense to have Schroeder. 
if you're actually going to do this. What what was the Mark Stein tweet? Mark Stein says it, that Westbrook's coming to the Lakers. He does. So he's is he calling it done? Uh, he well, he just says a he basically says it's happening now. Here's Bobby Marks. Salary implications on a proposed Westbrook trade. Next year he makes forty four. The year after that, it's a forty-seven million dollar player option. Um, so what this does for the Wizards is Kuzma makes thirteen, KCP makes thirteen, that's twenty-six. Harold makes ten, that's thirty-six. They're committed to thirty-six million, but they would save money on the deal. They would send out forty-four and take in thirty-six. I, uh, man, would this be fun? Oh, crazy, crazy! I mean, and you we've said got where's our big the three. spacing? We're saying how? How do you guard a team with LeBron, Russ, and AD? Aren't they just going to run? Well, you still need to bomb threes, though. I mean, it's still a league where you need to bomb threes. I still I don't know think how they need stop- to add. They need to add shooters, a shooter or multiple shooters. Okay, so remember, I did send you. Well, somebody just sent out a picture of the three of those guys with their gold medals. Oh, when yeah. they all played together in Team USA. Um, Mace, there, there are reports out there, and I don't have specific names for you, but it's one of the stories I sent you guys this morning, that mm-hmm. there are a, a bunch of free agent veteran guys who want to come to the Lakers. Yes, I saw that story. Yeah, To play with, now it would be all three of these dudes. I mean, it's... It's almost unfathomable, the amount of... Star power. Yeah, they'll have three Hall of Famers on the same team. This is back to Magic, Worthy, and Kareem. Yeah, no question. No question. Uh, And uh, by by all signs out there, it's happening. Um, Here's a guy named Jake Fisher who works for Bleacher Report. Here's what he said. The good news for the Lakers is that there's absolutely a large amount of talk from team executives around the league that if the Lakers are able to get a big guy and they make this home run like Russell Westbrook, um, there's a lot of speculation that seems founded that a lot of veteran-type players ready and interested to come sign on minimum deals and go chase this ring with LeBron and those guys. So who knows who's out there and who would come? And jumping around, because that's what we're doing today, uh, Ken Rosenthal, and this is on the baseball front, the Max Scherzer front. What a day. Sources say other teams are still trying to top Padres' offer for Scherzer. National, Nationals and Padres essentially have agreed on players in trade. Situation may be complicated by Scherzer's ability to veto any trade and effectively choose his next club. What if the Dodgers get Scherzer and the Lakers get Westbrook on the same day? That would be insane. Leave. Be one of the great days in Mason and Ireland history. Oh, and Holy do it during the mackerel. show. Do it during the show. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. You know what else we're going to do? Uh, we will, uh, And you know what? We're going to do Radio Tinder coming up next. Mason and Ireland, 710 ESPN. Yeah. Do it. There is apparently a video or a picture of Lindsay jumping off a gigantic rock on Instagram, right? Lindsay? Excellent. Sure is. It's the uh, scariest thing I've ever done in my life so far. So go check it out at Lindsay Baseball and Instagram. All right. What hey, Mace, you, uh, well, Linz, before you get going, let me read one, the latest uh, update from Woj, talking about the Westbrook to the Lakers trade, which is not done yet, nope. but is in the works. Here's Woj's tweet from 30 seconds ago. This is a trade Washington wants to make with Bradley Beal in mind creating some salary cap flexibility for the future to add talent around him. The idea of returning to his Los Angeles roots is appealing to Westbrook. So uh, Westbrook, who went to losing her high and went to UCLA, could be playing in his hometown. And Mace, here's Jeff Passan Uh with another ball in the air. The Los Angeles Dodgers are finalizing a deal to acquire left-handed Danny Duffy from the Royals. So that's happening, according to Jeff Passan. Okay, so they're starting with a. Let's see, Danny. I I, I don't know Danny Duffy off the top of my head. Let's let's Woof. look and see. Uh, what what do you, what do you say, Lynch? Do you know him? I mean, he's never been 
great pitching in the American League against the Indians, but I mean, obviously, I don't. I haven't seen if he's had a good year or not, but we can react to that after Radio Tinder, right? Yeah, we can. Yeah, let's Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. Dodgers it. acquired Danny Duffy from the Twins. He's four and three with a two fifty one ERA in sixty one innings this year. Has started twelve games. So uh, there is a starter for the Dodgers, Danny Duffy, uh, from the KC Royals. All right, All right, All right. Guys. So fresh off an NBA championship and MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo is young and super rich, but that doesn't mean he wants to pay money for things that should. Be free. Earlier this week, Giannis wanted to know how to watch Team USA basketball, sending out a tweet looking for some guidance. And his followers broke the news to him that he'd have to pay to subscribe to Peacock. His response was, if I got to pay, never mind. Are you guys paying for Peacock just to watch the Olympics? Swipe left or swipe right? It's so funny you bring this up. I just paid for it two days ago. It's $4.95 a month, $5 a month because I wanted to watch... Uh, Naomi Osaka, who I couldn't find anywhere else, so I paid the $5. Mace, it is so hard to navigate It is where these things are. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like go back on it, take it off. I, I, I can't find anything. It's stupid. It's ticking I, me off. Yeah, I think, I, Lindsay, you had the same experience? Yeah, I mean, I came home from, you know, not having – barely any cell service or internet and I wanted to watch the Olympics and catch up on things and I was flipping around trying just looking for on the guide Tokyo Olympics and it's on all these different channels and some my mom has and some she doesn't and then you have Peacock it's like there's no good comprehensive list of where what channels you can watch what things on it's stupid yeah I am having trouble uh, navigating with Peacock and I guess they're putting a lot of the good stuff on Peacock and I I don't is it an app on the TV? What is it? I'm tired of these streaming services. There are too many. I, I don't get it. I guess they're getting a lot of new subscribers because of the Olympics, but it's it's. I'm not going to be one of them. I'm not going to be one of them. Uh, it's, it's too complicated. It's too complex. My strategy is, if I'm watching the Olympics, watch Channel 4. I assume I won't miss anything if I watch Channel 4, where Tariko is doing uh, the, the anchoring. But beyond that, I, I'm not venturing onto USA Network and all these other places. And I'm not paying for Peacock. What they'd be smart to do is to offer it for free at first. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. All right, next one. Uh, McDonald's just announced the next Famous Orders Meal collaboration with TikTok famous hip-hop star Saweetie. Beginning August 9th, McDonald's customers in the U.S. can have the Saweetie Meal, a Big Mac, four-piece chicken McNuggets, medium fries, and a medium Sprite, tangy barbecue sauce, and Saweetie and sour sauce which is McDonald's regular sweet and sour sauce renamed for the promotion. The meal will be served in special packaging that reflects Saweetie's style. Um, McDonald's has had major success with the Travis Scott and BTS meals. Is there a celebrity that would make you guys personally head to McDonald's because you wanted to buy their, their endorsed meal? That's interesting. Uh, yeah, the Travis Scott meal has done really well. The Jay Balvin meal has done really well. Uh, how about uh, I will sign up if it is the Taylor Swift meal. Which would contain what? Um, it would contain a it, – it has to be light, right? It's got to be light. So it would be like a, uh, a quarter pounder, a small fries, and a Diet Coke. Uh I would not do it. Sounds I, exciting. I've, <laughs> Lindsay, I've outgrown McDonald's. I just don't go oh, there Oh, come on. Anymore. McDonald's is great, man. I just don't go there anymore. Uh, get stoned and go face down in a bag of McDonald's. There's nothing better. That's you don't even Tommy's get like an, for. an ice cream cone or a McFlurry once in a while. Or coffee. They've had a good iced coffee. The McFlurry machine's always broken. That's, That's true. true. That's their thing. Yeah, I went yeah. You know, two days ago and I asked for a McFlurry and they said, oh, it's broken. I'm like, come on. It's three in the afternoon or whatever it was. Yeah, they should do I, a LeBron, LeBron meal. Oh, they there you're talking. Yet? Some oh, sports yeah. meals would be great. Yeah, yeah, I feel like they used to do Michael Jordan ones all the time. Yeah. All, all right. right. What else We're we obviously got? very, very uh, – Bob Nightingale says Dodgers still trying to acquire Max Scherzer from the Nats. Good. Yeah, so it's not, it's not dead Get yet. Get in there, Lins, Friedman. Lynn's what's right. next? So a woman does not want her son to propose with her mother's wedding ring. She explained why on Reddit's Am I the A-Hole forum, 
Quote, my son wants to use my mom's ring to propose to his girlfriend. I told him I won't let him use the ring for the engagement, only the wedding, and only after she signs a legal agreement saying the ring is to be returned to the family in the event of a divorce. My son's furious because he says having that agreement makes it look like they think they're going to divorce. I admit, I think there's a good chance of that. They've broken up before and got back together again, and they get into massive fights at least once a month. So while the mother doesn't oppose her son's marriage, she does want to protect the fairly heirloom. Is the mom the a-hole? Swipe left or swipe right? I don't think so. It's her mom's ring, right? Yes. Yeah, Yeah, it was passed down to her from her mom. Yeah, I think she has a say in this. I don't think she's an a-hole, Mace. If she doesn't want to give up her mom's ring, I think that that's her... Her choice, her prerogative. No, I think what it's doing is it's not. It's giving a vote of no confidence to this marriage that her son is jumping into. Give him the ring. Uh, that, this is the idea of an heirloom, is you pass it down to the next generation. And this woman, she may have doubts, but it, that, that relationship could be permanent. They could be together forever, and the ring makes perfect sense. Now, the question is, if they divorce, does she get the ring back? And I would argue that the bride probably would not do that. I think most, uh, most uh, what's the word, respectable women, in the event of a divorce, they would give the ring back if it were a family heirloom. So I think that's one of those, you know, whatever. So the maybe if the marriage is, doesn't work, divorce. she would give it back. I would think so because it comes from the family. But yeah, the fact yeah, that the mom you, wants right. her to sign a piece of paper saying that, I think that's super tacky. Yeah, I do, too. I do, too. Yeah, you can't ask somebody to sign an agreement. I, I just I would hope that if the marriage doesn't work out, and I hope it does. I hope it works out. But if if it doesn't work out, I, I think the, the girl should return the ring to the family for that kid's next marriage. He, that ring could be passed from girl to girl to girl for the rest of that guy's life. Yep, exactly. All right. So since I can tell you guys are totally enthralled with Radio Tinder today, I'll do one more here. Researchers. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> at the well, there University. is a lot going on, Lindsay. Yeah, it's, I know. It's, I understand. it's a very unusual day. I understand. But, you know, there's always time for Radio Tinder. Yes, always. So researchers at the University of Vienna discovered that dogs can, in certain cases, know when people are lying. The scientists carried out a study with hundreds of dogs to determine what extent dogs could spot deception. Lindsay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt yeah, we you did only it yesterday. We just did this story yesterday. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Well, what was your question at the end of it? The question was, do you believe that dogs can tell whether or not you're lying? Do you have a different okay, question well, than that? Yeah, my question is, do you think that you can detect lies better than your dog? I mean, I, you've been pretty bad at sniffing out Mason's lies. Yeah, yeah you, I actually would not bet done more well. on the dog. Yeah, dogs are very intuitive. You know, they're judging. They they look at you, and they you've got thousands of little gestures and movements, and they read all of them. Dogs are dogs are so much smarter than we than we think they are. So I think the dog is probably better at sniffing out a lie than a person. Although I I'll tell you, I'm pretty good at sniffing out lies. If Ireland was doing lie of the day, I think I would figure it out. Oh, let's switch mm. it up then. Yeah, let's switch it let's up. Let's do a week where I do it. Okay. I like that idea. And we'll see how you can do. Or we should alternate. We should alternate on whose day it is yeah. to, to do, do lies. I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, good, good. Okay. See, something good came out of doing the same story you did yesterday. That's you right. That's right. All right, Linz, is that it? Yep. There you got one more. No, no but, well, uh, that'll be it for today. So it's by the way, all this breaking news ca- going Cavs, on. Cavs just traded for Ricky Rubio. Lindsay, oh, you got him coming. Great. So uh, I Dodgers if- trade for Danny Duffy from the Royals. He's waving his 10-5 rights. Huge Lakers fan. And right now he's uh, too busy trying to figure out if they're getting Westbrook or healed, but he will be approving the trade according to Bill Plunkett. Um, I tweeted this out. Danny Duffy uh, is currently on the injured list with a flexor strain, but expected to return. He has no trade protection. Uh, long a starter, he could wind up pitching in high-leverage, multi-inning relief spots for the Dodgers. Duffy is a free agent this winter. So who does that sound like? Pitching in a high-leverage, multi-inning relief spot. He may be this year's Julio Arias. Yeah, could be. Hope so. Yeah, yeah. So Danny Duffy is the first acquisition for the Dodgers, and they are not done. They are not done. And the Lakers are just getting started. Crazy. Um, All right, so we will keep you up to date on absolutely all of it as we get through the afternoon. I hope something breaks during our show. That would be awesome. Uh, it would be it'd be awesome if we if if it happened before we uh, left the air. It'd be reminiscent, John, 
of the day Chris Paul was traded and then later on untraded to the uh, to the Dodgers or to the uh, Lakers a few years back. Mason Ireland, seven ten ESPN.